Verily, all praises for Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We praise Him, we seek His assistance, and we ask for His forgiveness, and we seek refuge in Him from the evils of ourselves. Whomsoever Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala guides, none can misguide. Whomsoever He misguides, none can guide. And we bear witness that there is no, no one worthy of worship except Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And we bear witness that Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam is his slave and messenger. Dear brothers and sisters in Islam, Imam al nawawi rahimahullah in his famous collection of a hadith titled Arba'in al nawawiya brings a hadith to his collection well known to many of us. A hadith described as the hadith of Jibreel. Jibreel alayhi salam appears in the form of a man to ask our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam a number of questions. Within this narration, we are taught many aspects of our religion. The five pillars of Islam, shahada, salah, sawm, zakah and hajj. We are taught the, the pillars of faith, belief in Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, his angels, his books, his prophets alayhi salam, belief in the resurrection and in the concept of faith fate we are taught about the concept of ihsan excellence and how we should be worshiping allah subhanahu wa ta'ala in the best of manners and towards the end of this lengthy hadith we are taught about islam's position on the day of judgment jibreel alayhi salam asked the prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam fa'akhbidni anis sa'ah tell me about the final hour and the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, he replied by saying, مَلْ مَسْؤُولُ عَنْهَا بِأَعْلَمَ مِنَ السَّائِلِ The one ask does not know more than the one asking. And this statement from the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam laid down a foundation for us all about our belief in the last hour. That it is unknown as to when it will occur. However, brothers and sisters, the narration carries on. And Jibreel alayhi salam asked the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam, فَأَخْبِنِّي عَنْ أَمَارَتِهَا Tell me about its signs. And so, the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam made mention of some signs of the Day of Judgment. And throughout his life, he sallallahu alayhi wa sallam would dedicate time to sit with the Sahaba ridwanullahi alayhim and, and inform them of some of the signs of the hour, some of which has already taken place or are taking place in the current climax, climax we are living in or will take place in the near future. And from these narrations wherein the Prophet Sallallahu explains the signs of the hour, there are two narrations that I would like to focus on and I would like all of us to ponder about in today's khutbah insha'Allah. It has been narrated on the authority of Abu Darda radiallahu anhu that the Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam, he said in a hadith, أول ما يرفع من هذه الأمة الخشوع حتى لا يرى فيه خاشعة. That the first thing that will be uplifted from this ummah will be khushu, concentration, until you will not find anyone with khushu. And in another narration on the authority of Hudayfa رضي الله عنه that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم he said that أول ما تفقدون من دينكم الخشوع وآخر ما تفقدون من دينكم الصلاة. وَرُبَّ مُصَلِّنْ لَا خَيْرَ فِيهِ وَيُوشِكُ أَنْ تَدْخُلَ مَسْجِدَ الْجَمَاعَةِ فَلَا تَرَى فِيهِمْ خَاشِعًا That the first thing you will lose of your religion will be Al-Khushu' And the last thing that you will lose from this religion will be the Salah There may be a person praying yet there is no goodness in him Soon a time will come when you will enter a large masjid And not a single person with Khushu' in it Brothers and sisters in Islam if we were to analyze these two narrations closely, we find that both of these signs mentioned in these ahadith are in relation to the most important pillar of our faith, and that is the prayer. Prayer, a worship that Allah Azza wa Jal has glorified. Prayer, a worship that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has praised those who observe it. Prayer, a worship which was heavily emphasized by our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa sallam during his last moments. Abu Dawood al-Ibn Majah narrated that the Ali radiyallahu anhu, may Allah ta'ala be pleased with him, said, كَانَ آخِرُ كَلَامِ رَسُولِ اللَّهِ صَلَى اللَّهُ عَلَيْهِ وَسَلَّمْ الصَّلَاةِ الصَّلَاةِ That the last words that the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم uttered before he left this temporary life was الصلاة, الصلاة, the prayer, the prayer. 
Brothers and sisters, such is the status of this pillar of our deen, that unlike all other pillars, this is the only pillar that was legislated by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself in the heavens. Every other pillar we find that Jibreel alayhi salam was commanded to come down and inform the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam about its obligation. But for salah, it was made obligatory on the night of ascension in the presence of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala himself, Allahu Akbar. And such is the status that though we pray five times a day, the reward for every prayer is equal to 50 prayers a day. Anas bin Malik radiallahu anhu, he reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam said, 50 prayers were obligated upon the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wasallam. When he was taken on, his, taken on his night journey, then it was reduced until it was set at five and an announcement was made that, Ya Muhammad, O Muhammad, my word is never changed. So these five prayers will be counted as 50, subhanAllah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, Salah was a practice of all of the Prophets, alayhimussalam. And this obligation was not just restricted to our beloved Prophet Muhammad, sallallahu alayhi wasallam and his ummah. We find in many places in the Quran where Allah Azza wa Jal is advising and commanding the Anbiya to establish the prayer. In Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says about Isa alayhi salam, وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّةِ That Allah has enjoined upon me prayer and zakah so long as I remain alive. And in Surah Ibrahim, Allah makes mention of the supplication of Ibrahim alayhi salam. A supplication we read so often, that my Lord make me an establisher of prayer and many from my descendants, our Lord, and accept my supplication. In Surah Maryam, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala talks about Ismail alayhi salam. He says, And he used to enjoin on his people prayer and zakah and was to his Lord pleasing. Brothers and sisters in Islam, we are always looking for solutions to the problems we are facing in life. Be it financial problems, be it spiritual problems, be it physical problems, all of our solutions are combined in this one action of prayer. And this is why our beloved Prophet Muhammad sallallahu alayhi wa when he was stressed, when he was worried about any matter, the first thing he would do was rush to the prayer. The hadith says, كان النبي صلى الله عليه وسلم إذا حزبه أمر صلى That when anything distressed the Prophet صلى الله عليه وسلم, he rushed to the prayer. And he would command Bilal رضي الله عنه And he would say, يا Bilal, أقيم الصلاة أريحنا بها That oh Bilal, call the iqama for the prayer and give us comfort by it, subhanallah. But why? Because he knew that in salah, is where the solution lies. He found comfort through salah. Brothers and sisters in Islam, such is the status of prayer that regardless of our situation, we have been commanded to pray. Be in the midst of a battle, we have salatul khawf, the prayer during times of fear. Yet we are not allowed to let go of the prayer. While struggling, we shorten and combine, but yet we are not permitted to leave off the prayer. A person may be suffering from some medical condition and cannot stand up to pray. He is permitted to sit down and pray. And if that isn't even possible whilst lying down, but yet we are not permitted to leave off the prayer. And some of our fuqaha, of our jurists from different madhahib, they have gone to the extent to say that even the one who cannot even move any of his limbs in his body, he should pray bil ishara, just with the moving of his eyes, but yet he should not let go of his prayer, subhanAllah. Every other pillar of Islam, every other pillar of Islam, there are alternatives. Or the obligation of that specific worship drops for the unable person, but not salah. But why? Why has such an emphasis been given to this element of our religion? Brothers and sisters, know that salah is an opportunity for us all to converse with our Creator. It is an opportunity to connect with our Creator in a way that is not possible with any other pillar of Islam. Just imagine, every verse that we read from Surah Al-Fatiha in prayer, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, He is replying back to us. Every statement we are making through Surah Al-Fatiha in our prayer, He is listening to our statement. He is listening to our plea and He is responding back to it. 
Abu Hurairah radiyallahu anhu he reported that the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam he said Allah azza wa jal said Qasamtu salata bayni wa bayna abdi nisfayni wa li abdi ma sa'al that I have divided prayer between myself and my servant into two halves and my servant shall have what he asks for فَإِذَا قَالَ الْعَبْدَ الْحَمْدُ لِلَّهِ رَبِّ الْعَالَمِينَ قَالَ اللَّهُ تَعَالَى حَمِدَنِي عَبْدِي When the servant says all praises due to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, the Lord of the worlds, when he says, Alhamdulillahi Rabbil Alameen, Allah replies back by saying, my servant has praised me. وَإِذَا قَالَ الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ And when the servant says, الرَّحْمَنِ الرَّحِيمِ Allah ta'ala, what does he say? أَثْنَى عَلَيَّ عَبْدِي That my servant has exalted me. When he says, Malik Yawmiddin, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Majjadani abdi wa qala marratan fawwada ilayya abdi. My servant has glorified me and my servant has submitted to me. And when the worshipper says, Iyaka na'abudu wa iyaka nasta'een, what does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala say? Hatha bayni wa bayna abdi wa li abdi ma sa'al. That this is between me and my slave. And my slave shall have what he asks for. And then, when we finish off the surah in salah, we say, Surah al-Ladheena an'amta alayhim, ghayr al-maghdubi alayhim, wa lad-dalleen. What does Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala reply? That this is for my servant. This is between me and my servant. And my servant will have what he has asked for. Allahu Akbar. What a conversation with the Lord of the worlds, the creator of all creation, Allah Azza wa Jal. Then we ask, why is the prayer so important to us? We are always looking to ways to cleanse ourselves from the sins we have committed day in, day out. Do we not listen to the words of the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam when he said, the parable of the five prayers is that of a river running at your door in which one cleanses himself five times a day. So similar to this, when one prays five times a day, the sins committed throughout the day are washed away from him. We ask why is prayer so important? We are always looking for ways to get rid of bad habits that we have Sins that we are addicted to by Allah, do we not listen to His words when He says, "Utlu ma uhiya ilayka min al kitab wa aqim al salah inna salat tanha an al fahsha wa al umunkar." Recite, O Muhammad, what has been revealed to you of the book and establish the prayer. Indeed, the prayer prohibits immorality and wrongdoing. Once a person is consistent on his prayer, his bad habits of sinning will start to fade away. And I will say this with full confidence. By Allah, you will never find a person who prays five times a day sincerely to his Lord and find him to be an open sinner at the same time. For the prayer, distance a person from the sins he is doing. Brothers and sisters, we ask why the prayer is so important in our lives. How many times have we searched for avenues for risk, for provision, for wealth, for sustenance, without realizing that sustenance and wealth is sought through the prayer? When Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala commanded the Prophet sallallahu alayhi wa sallam with prayer in the Qur'an, he followed the verse with an indication to risk, displaying to this ummah that indeed our risk, our sustenance is tied with our prayer. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says, and enjoin the prayer upon your family and people and be steadfast therein. We ask you not for provision, we provide for you and the best outcome is for those of righteousness. All solutions, brothers and sisters, are found within this great worship. Ibn Qayyim, rahimahullah, when mentioning some of the great benefits of prayer, that ha- the effects that it has on the worshipper, he says, that, as-salatu majlabatun lirizq, that prayer it attracts sustenance and wealth. It protects health, repels from all sort of harm, forces out illness, strengthens the hearts, illuminates the faces, it satisfies the souls, removes laziness, makes the limbs active, reinforces the strength of the body, expands the hearts, nurtures the souls, grants radiance to the hearts, protects all types of bounties, repulses the wrath of the Almighty Allah Azza wa Jal, attracts the blessings, creates a distance from shaitan, and brings one closer to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, Allahu Akbar. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala allow us all to establish the prayers. May he never deprive us of his infinite mercy. Ameen. Aqulu qawli hadha wa astaghfirullaha li wa lakum wa li sa'il al-mu'minina fa astaghfiruhu innahu huwa al-ghafur al-rahim.
Alhamdulillah, wahda, wa salatu wa salamu ala man la nabiya ba'da. Brothers and sisters in Islam, though the five daily prayers are an obligation from the Almighty Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, we must build to love the prayer. We must see this, we must not see this as a burden, rather a blessing from Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. We must look at the scholars that came before us and look at how much love they had for this great ibadah as a way of motivation for us all. There are those from amongst the pious predecessors who would forget about the surroundings, forget about all aspects of life when entering into the state of prayer. Their love of prayer made them forget about what is around them and they disconnected from the creation and, create, uh, and connected with the creator. And a narration worthy of mentioning on this topic is the incident of the famous companion Abbad ibn Bishr. After the battle of that al-Riqah, the Prophet ﷺ commanded two companions, Ammar ibn Yasir and Abbad ibn Bishr, to stand as security on a mountain. Whilst Ammar ibn Yasir was sleeping, Abbad ibn Bishr found an opportunity to stand in prayer. Whilst he was praying, one of the enemies happened to pass by. He shot three arrows directly towards Abbad ibn Bishr. All three of these arrows penetrated his body, but he was so engrossed in prayer that he didn't utter anything. He did not feel a, uh, you know, a sign of pain. And he continued the prayer. When Ammar woke up and he saw the blood and wounds on his body, he asked, how did this happen? And he complained to him why he did not wake him up. And then he replied back by saying in a very beautiful manner, that I was in the midst of reciting verses of the Quran, which filled my soul with awe and did not want to cut short the recitation. The Prophet ﷺ commanded me to commit this surah to memory. Death would have been dearer to me than, the, than to cut the recitation or let the recitation be interrupted. Allahu Akbar. The love of prayer and the level of khushu' would make them forget about the pains of life. And this is something that we need to really understand, brothers and sisters in Islam. That though every single one of us, we are trying our best to uphold this obligation of Islam by praying five times a day. We need to look for ways that we can build that relationship, build that love for salah. Build that khushu' for salah. And I want to finish off by giving a short reminder. That summer is coming up. And one of the ways that we have to build khushu' is also looking at outwardly. Not just inwardly looking at the conditions of salah. One of the things that we observe is that when it comes to summertime, we become complacent. And we start to wear clothes that are not befitting for the Muslim. And you have to understand that covering the awrah is a condition for the validity of salah. And we have many brothers that sometimes are coming in salah during the summer. I understand it's hot, but they are wearing shorts that are not covering the awrah. So brothers, we have to understand that if we want our salah to be accepted in the sight of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, increase in the khushu' in salah, there are certain things that we need to do. And one of the things that we need to work on is dressing appropriately because we are standing in front of who? We are not standing in front of any creation. We are standing in front of the creator of the creation, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And just imagine just to finish off that you were to get invited to visit some authority, someone special. How would you dress up? You would dress the best and you would wear the best of clothes. But this is the creator of the creation. How should we be standing in front of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala? So it's a reminder for myself and you all that when we come to salah, we have to be dressed in the best of manners. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala keep us all sincere. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala accept it from us all. هذا وصل وسلم على من أمركم الله بالصلاة والسلام عليه حيث حيث قال إن الله وملائكته يصلون على النبي يا أيها الذين آمنوا صلوا عليه وسلموا تسليما اللهم صل على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما صليت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد اللهم بارك على محمد وعلى آل محمد كما باركت على إبراهيم وعلى آل إبراهيم إنك حميد مجيد ربنا آتنا في الدنيا حسنة وفي الآخرة حسنة وقنا عذاب النار ربنا لا تزغ قلوبنا بعد إذ هديتنا وهب لنا من لدنك رحمة إنك أنت الوهاب ربنا اغفر وارحم وأنت خير الراحمين عباد الله رحمكم الله إن الله يأمر بالعدل والإحسان وإيتاء ذي القربى وينهى عن الفحشاء والمنكر والبغي يعظكم لعلكم تذكرون فذكروا الله يذكركم واشكروه على نعمه يزدكم ولذكر الله أكبر والله يعلم ما تصنعون أقيم الصلاة